Hey everyone, it is I, Mr. Cinema Junkie, with a video response to the Real XX Tubby XX. I hope I got that name right. Uh, he touched on a subject about uh, Victor Salva, and this has been a long running, I guess, point of interest for me as a horror fan. Um, yep, Lorenzo, I thought everybody knew that story about. Uh, about Victor Salva and his uh, tainted past. Um, but even before I knew about it, uh, I believe it wasn't until I saw Jeepers Creepers that I kind of kind of raised an eye a little bit because in Powder it was kind of like it, it had like a couple of moments that where I was sort of like, you know, fine, whatever. I just, it just blew past me but in Jeepers Creepers it started to get a little weirder with especially like you had pointed out the laundry scene like if it was a creature that was just trying to get his scent so he knew where he was at he would have just smelled the laundry in general but they made a point that he was someone said so he was over there sniffing in your underwear and sniffing your laundry and he put, picked up the underwear to kind of make a point of it uh, the pink underwear at that so, I was kind of like, ooh, he's smelling his underwear. And then, of course, the sheriff scene, where, of course, he eats the tongue out of his head. But just before he does that, yeah, that was a really passionate kiss, man. Now, they never, I don't think they ever really touched on the creature's sexuality. Was it a male or was it a female? It could have been a very ugly female. But it didn't look like a female. It looked pretty male to me. So, yeah. And But thanks for pointing out all those other little parts that I didn't... I didn't pick up on, like, the license plate thing. Gay forever and stuff like that. Um, but see, Jeepers Creepers 2 was the one that really... This is... I had already found out. I had already found out after Jeepers Creepers about Victor Salva. That's what made me look him up and say, is, is he gay? Is he a gay director or what? Just because I was wondering. I don't care one way or the other. But when I read up on it and found out what had happened, um, then it was, it became a, a game changer kind of, because then I was like, wow. And and they're letting, they're still letting him make movies. So the Hollywood community still lets him operate and uh, make the movies that he makes. And a lot of people had a big problem with him receiving funding and receiving money to make his movies. Uh, Jeepers Creepers 2 was the one that, that I started noticing a little more. I started keeping more, a more vigilant eye on the stuff he was doing. And aside from some of the, I guess, the more blatant scenes, like when he's looking through the window and he sees all the all the football players on the bus, and he's, like, licking the glass and all that jazz. And then he sees one, and he actually, like, winks at him. I mean, that's totally blatant, but the more subtle stuff. And I honestly didn't realize it, but you're right. He does have a lot of pissing scenes in his movies. That's just, like, I don't know, man. It's like uh, Quentin Tarantino with his Mexican standoffs, man. It's it's just like in almost every movie, or or just about every movie, he's got them peeing in public. Um, but it was there was one scene in particular that really got to me. It's after the bus broke down. Okay, now imagine you're in high school and you're on a bus coming back from a trip, whether it be a football game or whatever it is. But for the sake of argument, it's a football game. And the bus breaks down and you can't go any further. I think one of three things is going to happen. Number one, people are going to sit on the bus and, either, and take a nap or piss and moan that the bus isn't going anywhere. Two, some of them are going to wander off and explore the area regardless of what the teacher tells them or what the coach tells them about staying near the bus. They're still going to wander off and explore everything. And three, so they're going to stand outside the bus leaning in the shade and just talking amongst themselves, texting, doing whatever, talking on the phone, trying to get a signal or whatever the hell that they would be doing alongside the bus. Those are the three main things I think they would be doing. What I don't think they would be doing, and this is why 
it stands out so big being a Salva movie, a Victor Salva movie, is what they wouldn't be doing is taking off their shirts and sunbathing on top of the bus. I don't care how much a football player is into his body, he's not going to sit out and tan while they're trying to figure out how to fix the bus. None of them would do that. One in 50 might, but not a whole row of them. A lot of guys don't say, hey, let's take off our shirts and hang out together. It, does, it just doesn't happen that way. So he's, he does have a lot of homoerotic overtones. But after hearing about the whole clown house fiasco, I had to see the movie just to see, you know, I guess get a better understanding of the victim. I don't know, because that's the youngest one that was the one that he molested. He made a, a video or a, a film of them actually having sex, and I guess that became Exhibit A. So when I saw the, the movie, sure enough, like you said, there's like all these points that just stand out. Like, why would an older brother... I, I don't want to see my brother walking around in his underwear, let alone in a bathtub, but this guy's just hanging out there like he's the... He's the big daddy in juvenile, in juvenile hall. And just be like, hmm, mm, look at him. Fresh meat. And it's creepy. The whole thing was creepy, man. But the part that stood out, because, like I said, because of his past, um, was that butt shot. It's like he had, a, he, he had it focused on there without being too focused. He was only like two steps away from, or two clicks away of the camera, to be right on that kid's ass crack the whole time. Why? Because he wanted to do it. Because he wanted that shot in there. There was no redeemable reason to have that shot in there other than it's like he's making softcore kitty porn without actually making softcore kitty porn. You see what I'm saying? And then, then I started reading too much into the damn movie. Like one of the clowns attacks some one of the guys. Uh, from behind, and I, I took that like, you know, oh, it's a guy taking it from behind. Maybe I'm way off base, but again, because it's a Salva movie, maybe I'm not. So yeah, uh, the thing is, is that when I review, when I found the video, I mean, when I found the video, when I did the video before, I think I touched on the subject of, yes, he's a pedophile, yes, he did some horrible things, but does that make his movies unwatchable? Does that change our minds as movie fans and horror fans as well as to whether or not we go to see the movies? Let's say Iron Man 4 came out. And you know you want to see Iron Man 4 if you see Iron Man 3, if you're into the Iron Man movies. But you find out the director had a jaded past, like he killed a school full of teen, uh, teenagers. No, not even teenagers. Kindergartners. He went to an elementary school and opened fire and killed everybody. But he already paid his debt to society, and now he's a director trying to make up for things. And he directed Iron Man 4. Would you still go see the movie, even knowing that he did these things? Probably. You probably would. A lot of people would protest, protest it and say... Don't go see this movie and give this man your money. He's going to make millions off of this. And it's true. But. You have to be kind of. I don't know. Objectionable. You have to kind of be like. Balance out. Bad and good. I mean. I personally. Regardless. I do like the Jeepers Creepers movie. I'm looking, to the, I'm looking forward to the third one. Clown House wasn't that great of a movie, really, but it was okay. It was all right, but I could do without all the little kid scenes, man. It was, that that part, now knowing what I know, it, that is a little unnerving. You know, sometimes you get a movie and it's like it's censored for blood and violence. I wish they would censor out all like the bathtub scenes and the bathroom scenes. That's that's all. I'm against censorship. I really am. I'm I'm totally against censorship. But those are scenes I can do without considering knowing Salva's past. So, my the whole, I guess the whole reason I'm saying this is just to say that, yes, Salva, he's a pig, but he's a pig who makes movies that are fairly decent, 
And uh, I don't see myself stopping watching any of his movies anytime soon. It does kind of tend to make one want to download and bootleg his stuff so he doesn't get that kind of money. But I'm not advocating that. There I am playing like the creature. Wink. Um, but yeah. Thanks for make, bringing that up again, though. I mean, that's that's always been a very big point of interest for me that he's a director of some of the movies I really like. Even Powder, I, I thought that movie was pretty damn good. Um, very different. But, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a big difference when it's a director versus an actor. Now, if an actor winds up being a pedophile, he's just kind of, yeah, he's this nasty guy. I hope he never... He never makes uh, another movie again, but the director hides behind the camera. We never actually have to see his face or deal with him on that level. So I think it's a little more palatable because we don't have to see him. So, yeah, that's basically all I had to say, man. wanted to make a video response to it because, yeah, I, I do find this a, an interesting topic. And uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts with us, man. And great video editing, by the way. And it's good to see a video with you talking about such things. It's, I really think your opinion is awesome. So keep up the great work. Sorry about the little belch there. Just ate. Talk to you later, man.